Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and welcome back to another episode of Every Effect and After Effects Explained. Today we're going to be taking a look at the channel video effects folder and the effects that are in here. So the first one we have is arithmetic. If I click and drag it on the clip, this just allows us to blend the red, green, and blue color channels with different simple mathematical functions. So for example, I can increase the red value and I can blend that in different ways like and or so you have like subtractive or additive effects or inverted and difference effects. These are basically very similar to blending modes. And most of these effects in the channel effect are gonna be similar to these different channel affecting and blending modes. So the next one is actually called blend. And this just allows us to blend one layer with another. So you can click and blend this layer. Let's say I have this layer on top. I can blend these two layers together and choose different opacities to blend them at. Most of the time you probably can just do that using the actual blending modes in the layer panel. But you know, there's always more than one way to do things when you're video or photo editing. It's like one plus one equals two, but so does four minus two, similar to that. Next up we have calculations. This again allows us to choose our input channel, so red, green, blue, alpha is RGBA, that's everything. Or we can just select one color channel, so just the red or green color channel, and you see it kind of picks up different shades of the black and white. And then we can choose a second layer if we want, and we can choose what color channels to pick from that layer, and we can blend them. So we can increase the opacity of one or the other of those layers, and create a blended image in this way. And aside from just the opacity, you can also you have all the blending modes available for you. Next up, we have CC Composite. Now this is similar if you've been familiar in Photoshop with Apply Image. It's just a way to apply the original image back on your layer, but put it on a certain blending mode. So you might not want to just stack the same image twice, but let's say, for example, you had another effect on here like a blur, so you had a radial blur on here, and you had a ton of blur, and then you added the CC composite effect. Remember, these effects go in order that they're stacked on the effects control panel, so if you had something like a blur and then you added a composite of the original image back on top, then you can blend that image, and that's just one example, but with the variations of blending modes, you can probably achieve tons of different kinds of results. Next up, we have Channel Combiner. This effect can isolate or extract just one channel or piece of information about the layer, such as the red, green, blue, or hue, lightness, and saturation. And it can also convert it to another one. So if I picked out the red color channel and I converted it to blue, you'll see that the color kind of shifts. If I converted the red color channel to green, you see that the color shifts in that way. What if I converted the lightness to saturation? Here it's using the lighter parts to be more saturated and the darker parts to be less saturated. So you can do different things. This could be used not only creatively, but also in a functional sense. Let's say you needed to remove certain information or color channels so you can do some kind of mask or other composition. This can be a way to, to achieve that. And you can also use secondary layers to blend. So another example here, if we use the lightness to determine the alpha, that means that only the light parts will show through and it's gonna make all the dark parts transparent. And that can come in handy for some kind of composition where you turn on something else in the background like that. And you can all of a sudden create these cool compositions where those shadows get filled in with whatever is underneath because they were transparent. Next up we have compound arithmetic. This is actually an effect that is only still in here to provide backwards compatibility to older versions. This effect allows you to take one layer and apply a blending operator on it, kind of like the arithmetic tool. In most cases where you're, we don't need some sort of specific backwards compatibility to an older version, you could probably just do it in an easier way just by using regular old blending modes on the layer. Next up we have invert. This is pretty simple. It just inverts all of the colors. So it takes everything that was dark, makes it light, 
all the color channels get inverted. That's by default. However, you can adjust the channel that's getting inverted. So if you only want to adjust the red channel or the blue channel or green channel, then you can do those kind of inversions. And you can also blend it back in with the original. So you can get different kind of tints or color effects. And remember, you can keyframe all of these. So if you added some sort of keyframe, you could do like cool flashes and strobes. Even a more functional example, if you had like black and white shapes, but you wanted to flip the black and white colors, you could use the invert instead of going into each layer. Next up, we have mini max. Now this might look like it just like kind of a square blur. It just makes your image all blocky. And you can surely use it for creative effect like so, but also you can use it functionally to make certain shapes or mats bigger or smaller. Like let's say the silhouette here, I had cut it out and I want to make it a little bit bigger so we can use it in a different way. I can try to use mini max to increase that or decrease it. So you can do minimum or maximum. And After Effects is taking a look at the edges and squeezing them in or expanding them out. And you can also choose just the color channel that it's working on. You can also do just horizontal or vertical if you needed to expand in that direction only. Next up, we have remove color matting. Now this effect might want to be used in combination with other effects like keying effects. So if I take a color key, for example, and I key out the blue balloons out of here, and then underneath I had any old other layer and Let's say I took that key and I feathered it out maybe a little bit. And so you get some areas with some transparency going on. The remove color matting tries to clean up those fringe areas where there might be haloing. So the background color in this case is kind of like this really grayish purple. So I have the flexibility to try to remove that and get a more clean blend. So you can see this is without that and with that. So it just allows you to kind of control the fringe edges of these halos. Next up, we have the set channels effect. This allows us to set the channels of one layer or parts of it to another layer. So if we take a source layer, for example, let's say I had a solid here with like some cloud fog on it and I use that as a source layer. I can use that cloud layer to adjust the red, green or blue color channels or even like the saturation or lightness of this layer. So just to make my point, let's make this contrast like crazy. So we have this crazy contrasted black and white clouds. So let's say we chose source layer as that black solid with the clouds on it. Make sure we choose effects and masks. You could see that it's using the cloud layer to adjust the red color channel. Let's say we set the alpha or just like the overall shape to the black solids to the black solids luminance, which is just like its brightness and darkness. Now we can see that the alpha shape of this is being determined by the brightness or darkness of the clouds. Next up, we have set matte. Now let's take the example of that black and white clouds layer again. We can take the matte from that black solid, plus make sure the effects and masks because the black solid is just a black solid but the clouds are the effects. We can use the mat for the lightness. And in this way, we can create a mat or a transparency so that only the lightness of those clouds is where this video is being revealed. We can even invert it if we need. And right now it's just a static image, but remember you can always animate anything. So let's say I was to animate the evolution from here. Let's add the keyframe and I moved forward and made it go a couple rotations. Now we have this cool animation going on and we're using this layer's inf lightness information to create a mat for this layer, creating a cool little transparency. So you can do it with clouds, you can do it with shapes, you can do it with basically any of the channel information on any layer. Next up we have shift channels. This allows us to take one channel from another channel and apply it to a different channel. So kind of swapping them. So the alpha is just remember the overall shape of the layer. So we're taking the alpha from, from the alpha, leaving it in its original shape. But if we were to make the alpha the red color channel, you'll see that only the red parts 
now are available. If we were to make it the saturation, you see that change to more saturated areas, the lightness. So you have different options there to cut out the shape based on the channels. You can also take like the red color channel from the blue color channel and the blue from the red in a way kind of swapping and inverting colors. You can take the green from the lightness. Lastly, we have solid composite. This just allows us to composite a solid color on top of our layer and effects. So let's say I wanted to composite a blue color on top of here. I can either lower the original source's opacity so that that blue color slowly shows through, or I can use something like a blending mode to set it to screen or multiply. So it allows you to composite just a solid color on top of your layer with opacity and different blending modes. And there's different creative or functional reasons that you might want to do that. But that completes our brief run through of everything in the channel effects. As you can see, a lot of these effects are similar. And like I said, there's, there's always more than one way to do many things in After Effects. If you enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe to my channel so you stay tuned for all of my new videos. And I'll see you over in the next video. Where we're going to be taking a look at the color correction effects in After Effects. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.